Hey, welcome back to Cool Classics. Today we're going to take a look at the life and career of Kenneth Washington, who played Sergeant Richard Baker on the final season of Hogan's Heroes. Now, it seems that Kenneth is a mystery man. I cannot find anything about where he was born, what city or state, but I do know he was an American, born October 19th, 1946. And that's pretty much all the information you're going to find if you search Wikipedia and the IMDb website. So jumping right into his acting career, you'll notice something strange right off the bat. He was in the movie The Foxes of Harrow, playing the role of Achille in 1947. He was born in 46, so this would make him one year old or an infant. I don't know. I can't find anything about that movie online either. And according to IMDb, his second acting credit was in the movie The Birds and the Bees, playing a native, but it came out in 1956, so that means he would have been 10 years old. And again, no information. Now in 1966, he was on I Dream of Genie, Season 2, Episode 11, The Girl Who Never Had a Birthday Party, Part 2. I don't have this, I can't find it, but I know a lot of you have this box set, so maybe you can go check it out. Now I'm going to list the stuff that I can find. He was on Dragnet, Season 3, Episode 7, called Robbery, playing Officer Bill Bray. That's the suspect. Picked him up about an hour ago. For what? Trying to roll a sail in a theater down in South Maine. You picked the wrong man. Turned out the sailor wasn't really asleep. Ticket taker at the shell say he turned old Juan here inside out. Where's the sailor now? Shore patrol took him to the hospital. Thought you said he won. Unless you're growing, sit down. Control 3 2 I don't know who that fool thinks he is, but he was about to get whooped up on by Jack Webb and Kenneth Washington. And he was on Adam-12 for eight episodes. Sometimes his character was called Officer Miller, other times Officer Russo. Now, they got this stuff on lockdown. I could only find one crappy clip, so you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. He was on an episode of That Girl, Season 3, Episode 13, At a Party, Drinking Champagne. Everything was good. Here, honey, these are all I could find. Couldn't you find another shoe? <laughs> Not that we could drink out of them. Here's a vase of champagne. Oh, excuse me. Okay, That's a sorry, loving whatever. cup. <laughs> the whole something, anyway. There you go. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Happy New Year. Oh, everybody has to have a drink at midnight. A cup of champagne? He was also on an episode of Petticoat Junction, Season 6, Episode 26, and I just made a video on B. Benaderet, and I think you'll really like it. Check it out. Keep going, Uncle Joe. Why, my dear, there's a stranger in distress. I must offer him assistance. My name's Carson. Jogger and Joe Carson. Blake, uh, William R. Blake. What can I do for you? Well, I'm looking for uh, Mr. Steve Elliott. Uh, perhaps you could uh, tell me where he lives. I can do better than that. I can take you there. <laughs> what do you want with Steve? You can tell me I'm his ex-partner. Well, you see, I'm with the Department of Agriculture. It's about that $2,000 contract. I'll probably be taking a kid back into business with me today. <laughs> oh, well, then maybe I should tell you. Uh, Steve's gotten himself into quite a mess. Like I was saying, I'm his ex-partner. I'll tell you what, he had his hands full with those characters on that show. He was also on Star Trek Season 3, Episode 17. Now, I know a lot of you Trekkies have the box set, so go ahead and check that episode out. And that leads us right up to when he joined the cast of Hogan's Heroes for their sixth and final season, September 20th of 1970. Kenneth was brought in to replace Ivan Dixon, who had played Staff Sergeant James Kinchlow. Now, I made a video on why he left Hogan's Heroes and his whole life story. You might want to watch it next. So Kenneth's character was called Sergeant Richard Baker, and he shared a lot of the same skill sets as Staff Sergeant Kinchlow. He was the communications expert who was in charge of keeping in contact with London. 
He could send and receive Morse code. He also planted hidden microphones all around the compound. He could also tap into the phone lines and listen in and record them. What about this? Run it under the rafter. It's not going to be used anyway. Right. Hey, wait till you hear Newkirk imitate Jim Mueller. Boy, you can fool me. Doesn't require too much talent for that. <laughs> It's all set, Colonel's in place. Good, Clink should be here any minute. A microphone. <laughs> How are you feeling these days, Commandant? Very good, thank you. Now the one thing that I did notice about his character was that he didn't get as much screen time. Not as prominent of roles, less speaking lines. I don't know if this was due to them trying to sort of hide the fact that they changed a character or if it was because he was the new guy and you know I just don't know but it was definitely less. And what happens after la guerre? What? After the war. I find a girl, get married, we have a child and the baby says to me and what did you do in the war papa? And I must answer, I made crepe Suzette. <laughs> Lie to the kid. <laughs> now, after Hogan's Heroes, he didn't really appear in too many more things. And a few of those that they have listed on IMDb, I looked him up, and it's not him in that part. So I think there's another Kenneth Washington that's an actor, and they're getting him confused. Now, of the few things that he really did appear in, they all seem to be based around detectives or police work, <laughs> like the Rockford Files and O'Hara, U.S. Treasury. Get that? Every golden word. <laughs> Happy sugar. Pure. 15,000 a kid. Yeah. Well, the goodies in here. Yeah, have Doc Gray run the test. Okay. Your joker in the delivery truck is long gone before I could alert a surveillance unit. Here, get this. Uh, yeah, I've been on here. Now we got a definite maker. Did you notice that? His character was just like Sergeant Baker. He was secretly recording their conversations. Now, he also appeared on four episodes of Police Story, but his parts were very small and he played a booking officer. Smile open, a white metal, one book safety matches, one cigarette partially smoked, one ring black painted metal, one red baseball cap. Well, hold on to that, that's evidence. Right. One pipe briar. Okay, I got rice. I'll save your breath, over. You're among friends. You got rice. And that brings us to 1977 and pretty much does it for his acting career. The five things that he did appear in in the 80s, I can't confirm them. Now I did find one source that says he has two daughters and I would hope that maybe someday they jump online and help clear up some of this stuff. And I haven't found anything that says that he passed away either. So hopefully everything's going good and he just went and had a good life and raised his family. And yeah, I wish he could have appeared in more things. Now on a side note to all you geeks out there, doesn't it seem that the shows from the 70s have lesser quality footage available than the stuff from the 50s and 60s? That's just something I've noticed over the last 10 years of watching videos online. Now I've made a lot of Hogan's Heroes videos, I'm going to do some more, so maybe think about subscribing, checking out the others. Cool classics.